Once again, I want to go back to what I said last time about the case studies and the conversations that we get going. I mean, we'll, we'll get some conversations going in class between us. There are, you know, uh, four microphones in the room. We'll kind of, we'll start to make things happen. But, um, but a, a big part of this is learning from each other. And it, it means that we have to develop a certain comfort level in having a conversation and, and, and talking about these things. And it's really risky, as we know, right? It's risky talking about this. For everybody, it's an, I know if you're white, you, under, you, you sort of intuitively understand the risks of talking about race issues in a public space. It's just part of it. Um, but it's not just people who are white in the United States. It's risky for everybody because everybody um, can step on certain landmines and so on. And landmines that we don't even necessarily know are there or what might be a problem for one person isn't necessarily a problem for another person. When people come down the front, especially today, because we're going to talk about things, some of them w that I'm going to bring people down, and I know uh, uh, that you're not an expert on these subjects, so we're just going to bring it out and see what happens. But when people come down to the front, they're taking a risk, right? Because they're coming down here, and bro, stand up really fast. Okay, right here, man. It's a lot of people, am I right? Yeah. Could you, yeah. could you talk about deeply personal things right here in front of all these people? No, that'd be hard. Yeah. It's easy from there, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's your name? Reed. Reed? Yeah. All right, man. It's a different, if it's a different scene, right? Everyone yeah. has different perspectives, different views. Different, you don't know what they're thinking. Someone might be offended by that. I don't know, right? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a different perspective. It's really diverse. When people come up, you don't, you can't, you can't be, we can't, you can't be jerks, okay? And you can't jump on Twitter and say annoying things and because sometimes what happens is someone will really say something annoying on Twitter and then I, we, I'll like track them down and then a couple of classes later, I'll find some way to get them up here and put them on the spot. And so you don't want that to happen. It's just be nice. Be nice, it's really vulnerable to be up here, man. That's why I have my beads, because I'm just like trying to figure this stuff out. Okay, are we cool? So let's start. And what I, what I want here is, I, want, I need someone who's black. Af Amer not international black, but dude, African American black? Okay, you're on. And then I need someone, anybody from any background, whatever, who's just like really into social media. Man. Yeah, okay, yep. Yeah. Okay, can you? Can you go in the back? I'll bring you out in a second, man. What's, what's your name? Um, I'm Annika. Annika? All right, so listen, man. What I want you to do today is tell us about that. <laughs> what? Yeah, like you don't... Hang on, hang on. What do you think it is? Like, it, just like... What do you think it is? Um, Twitter's just Twitter. In my opinion, like, it doesn't matter who you are. It's just Twitter. Uh-huh. And so I don't really know what the stereotype is there. Uh huh. Like black Twitter. Yeah, you don't have. You don't have. What do you imagine no. it might be? Because it's something. Am I right, bro? It's something. Look at all the black people in here going. Oh yeah, yeah. It's something. All right. No, it's not bad. It's not. No, he's not going to help you out. It's not bad. It's just like. I don't know what it is though. You don't have any. You don't have a way. No. Up. Yeah. Um. How, okay. What's it like? not knowing. It's just weird because I feel like there's a lot of people out here who know and I have no idea. Okay, which is fine, right? Just like I have no idea about Colorado or there are lots of things that lots of other people don't know anything about and <laughs> just is one thing you don't know anything about, right? Okay, all right, man. Um, do you want to take a guess? I'm scared. <laughs> what are you scared of? Because I have no idea what it is. Okay, I got you. So, but if you took a guess, are you, do you think like, you don't? Is it just like an African-American person's Twitter? <laughs> yeah, can't, you could say that. All right, man, you're on, my friend. What's your name? Jason. All right, hang on. Jason, have a seat. What, explain that. <laughs> so black Twitter is kind of like, it's Twitter for the black community, so you know. <laughs> you were right. So it's like, you know, an outlet for, you know, black people to be, it could be for people being heard, just different opinions that most people don't even know about, you know, stuff that only black people would get. 
hence black Twitter, you know. <laughs> like, can you give us an example? Lots of different opinions. But black Twitter is kind of crazy, though, because you see the different perspectives and different opinions of different black people, you know, different sides. So, for example, you know, when uh, black dudes get roasted for not dating black girls and they have that whole discussion on black Twitter, like, you know, that's... It's part of the community, but it's, it's all one community. It's like a, a cesspool of uh, lots of different opinions. But, uh, it's part of the culture at this point. So give, ask him a question. Or what question do you have for him? How do you find it? Oh, oh my God. Dude, that is like awesome. That is, that's the question. That's the question that all people who are not black are asking that question. They're in the class right now. Everyone's on their phone like, what the fuck is black Twitter? <laughs> How do I find this shit? Yeah, all right. Is it an app? Is it? A, yeah, how do you find it, man? So black Twitter, it's harder for some people to find because it's like, it depends on who you follow. So for black people, they have easy access to black Twitter because you follow a lot of black people. And so, you know, a lot of news or anything that goes on, you know, people will be reacting to it. You add new people and then you're kind of into that system. But it's mostly about, you know, just finding black people to follow, people who tweet a lot, and then uh, slowly but surely you get into it. Now, will you understand it? I don't know. Do you have another question? Well, you can find it. Um, is it like serious? Is it silly? Like what's mainly on there? Oh, dude, these are awesome questions. Great, yeah. It's all over the place. It's, <laughs> it's a hot mess. It, it really is. Yeah. It can, oh my goodness. It's awesome, man. Bro, you should have seen Black Twitter when Lizzo was doing all that stuff, man. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh Any, anybody else have a question? Who's got a question? Anyone want to throw a question out? Anyone want to add anything? Black Twitter is also a resource for different um, black uh, artists and different people who are starting businesses to get their stuff out there because it's not a lot of recognition. Mm -hmm. So it's also not, there's also the serious side. Yeah. And it's pretty cool, actually. There's a lot of, a lot of my friends are really um, use it in a, in a really awesome way, in that way. Yep. Okay, I need one volunteer. It's, any, any, it can be anybody. What's your name, bro? Nathaniel. Nathaniel? Yeah. All right, man. Say something about that. White people have a lot more money than everyone else. Yeah, so, so hang on. So you, are, what's your major? Uh, corporate innovation entrepreneurship. Okay, so you, you get median, do you understand median net worth? Yes. So take all the assets of a, of a household, stocks, mm -hmm. bonds, mm -hmm cash, mm -hmm. the value of the house, mm -hmm. car, et cetera, mm -hmm. hard assets, right? And then subtract mm -hmm. debt. debt, including school debt, school mm -hmm. loans, everything. Medical right? debt, everything. And what's left over is, is your family, your net worth, okay? For everybody under one roof. So now, when you see that, um, what, do you, what, do, what story does that tell for you as this white guy from Atlanta, Georgia? Um, to me, so I grew up in the middle of downtown Atlanta. So I was like, I, I grew up in a very, div I went to a very diverse high school and I grew up in a really kind of cool area. Um, and a lot of my friends who were black or Hispanic or not white, a big problem that I saw or I found with them was that either their parents were in a lot of debt or they themselves had to go into a lot of debt. I know that uh, medical debt in the black community is a huge problem. Like to go to school, go to college and stuff like that? Well, well school debt as well as medical debt. So okay, like a lot of right? uh, families can't pay off surgeries, can't pay off operations that they need. And so it just sort of puts them underwater and then they can't pay down the interest on it and they, or they can't pay down the principal on the uh, mm -hmm. whatever loan that they might have to get or then they can't pay for their insurance because the rates go up and so it's just sort of like this compounding issue. So you, so you say you saw that a, with a lot with a, black and brown people. Yes, well I, with, with pretty much all communities that were not white. Yeah. Besides Asian communities, I didn't really know many Asian people though. Uh-huh. So what, what, what do you make of the extreme difference? Like, what do, what do you... crazy. What, like, you, you got to explain that somehow. Like, how do you explain that? Like, it, it's, so, that's, it's literally 10 times. Like, the, the median family net worth for a white family is almost 10 times that of a black family. Like, that's it's, insane. Yeah, and and by, by the way, median means that half of all the families... So take... Um, Take Hispanic families, it's, 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 we'll just call it $20,000. That means half of all families in the United States that identify as Hispanic 
have a net, have a net worth, a net worth, family net worth, higher than $20,000. $20, and half of all Hispanic families have a net worth that's lower than. That's what the median means. So how do you, where do you think that comes from? Like when you, you know, you look, we don't, by the way, we don't have Native Americans up here either. Native Americans would be down here at like much lower, but what, what, when you, like, what kind of story do you tell yourself about where that comes from? So something that's interesting about it being the median rather than the mean is that uh, it eliminates the outliers. So yeah. that's not taking into account the billionaires and all that. It's also not taking into account the people that are really, 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 well, it is taking it into account, but it's not affecting the statistic as much because it's the median rather than the mean. So you're not, it's just the middle. You're not averaging it out. Um, and so it's even more striking to me because I think that that number might even be higher if you did average it out because, uh -huh. you know, traditionally uh -huh. the very, very rich people are also white. Uh huh. How about some, to who, who, who has a question? So my question is, could you um, at, like, uh, can attribute some of the difference to like difference in population, like the number of people of each race in the country? I have absolutely no idea what Give the shot. difference in population is. Um, off the top of my head, I think no, because isn't it true that in like whatever, took 20 years, white people are going to be the minority in America? I, there's, am, I, am I crazy? Am I smoking crack? No, nah, you, nah, you're not. Well, you might be, but you're not. You're all right. Yeah, it is. In California, actually, people of European ancestry are already the mino minority. But yeah, we'll go there. You're like corporate entrepreneurship. So do you think it has something to do with like um, opportunities that white people are given over people of different races just because they're white? And that might be what's contributing to this is that they're going after the same opportunity, but people in power aren't giving it to them? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that a good example, so I had, when I was like uh, 13, I was in middle school, when I was in like seventh grade, something like that, I had a friend, his name was Taj, and he was literally my best friend. And I didn't know that his dad was in jail, and he'd been in jail for like 15 years. Um, so it was literally like his dad, oh no, sorry, not 15 years, he'd been, he'd been in jail, so, like, since he was like two or something like that. So he didn't have a father figure. He only had a mom growing up. That's very, 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 very common in a lot of black ho households is having in one your, parent. In your community. In my community. Yeah. Um, I, I knew like three black people that had full families, like mom and because, dad together. Because Atlanta is also the, the hub of the black middle class, man. Yeah. Like, you know, you go around the burbs of Atlanta. Like, so here, let me, let me just say a couple things here really fast. Half of all black Americans are middle class. And then, then you have the percentage of black Americans who are upper middle class and upper class. And then you have the percentage that's working class and lower class. It's just that black people are, dis black Americans are disproportionately poorer than, let's say, white and Asian Americans, in terms of income anyway, in terms of, just, in terms of wealth, right? European Americans, disproportionately. But we're talking disproportionately. So there are, plenty of black people in this class who are just infinitely wealthier than plenty of white people in this class. So like you never just like when you, the problem with showing things like this and you're doing a nice job of it but the problem of showing things like this is people start to, to associate black being black and being brown with being poor and you know you go to the burbs of Atlanta man I've driven through the burbs of Atlanta like the black the black rich people and the Damn, man, I'm like, shit. Because I, I grew up working class. You go know? to Lenox Mall, you see like eight Bentleys parked out front. And it's Dude, like, exactly. Damn. And so this is, the, this is the black part of Atlanta. So you're talking about the particular area that you, you know, where you grew up and stuff, right? So, um, and, th and those fathers are not in, in jail, you know what I mean? I mean, they might get arrested for some kind of corporate white collar tax fraud or something, but, you know, whatever. They're not going to get arrested for some stupid shit. Dude, nice job. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Nathaniel. All right, man. Generational wealth contributes to the disparity that you see. Dude, on that huge, and we are going to talk about that. Huge. This doesn't. This does. You know, it's like. It's huge. Oh my God. You can, because th those of you know, like you know, you know, those of you who are, 
who come from money, regardless of what your background is, and your parents are writing checks for your Penn State education, and some of you, your parents are writing checks, but they grew up poor, but now they're writing checks, right? That's cool. Um, and many of you, your parents didn't grow up poor, and their parents were writing checks for them, and now they're writing checks for you, and you're going to go do well, and you're going to write checks for your kids. It's, it's, like, it's generation. It's so important. You don't, get, you don't get this kind of inequality without gener- people passing their wealth down to their own families. So I need someone who's Jewish, and then I need someone who's not Jewish. Doesn't matter. It can be anybody. What's your name? Musa. Musa? Yeah, I got All right, you. so listen, man. Keeping kosher, what's that? I guess it's like, because I guess something as like halal is the equivalent equivalence of halal to uh-huh. like the Jewish people because they can't have certain types of food. Uh-huh. So I guess the, um, the kosher is just halal for kosher, for, for Jewish. Hey, just keep saying halal, man. That's I all. Got you. It'd be, people, people in the back are like, hello? Why does he keep saying hello? Hello? hello. <laughs> yeah, okay, so what else? Like, what's it mean, though? What do you think it means what for, I like, how you means? eat? Or... Um, I came down here to find out, I guess. Oh, go ahead. What questions do you have? I'll ask him when he, when he gets here. Yeah? <laughs> is that it, bro? It's just has something to do with... I mean, it's, it probably has to do just with Just food? Religion. Is it just food or is it other things? Um, just probably the stuff they use to live. Um, I don't know. Maybe hair products as well. Yeah? Yeah. Um, soap, maybe. Yeah? Lotion. Kosher soap. Kosher. Dude. I don't know. Jewish Let's people, that, you can market that, man, kosher soap. <laughs> All right, I got it. No, that's good, by the way. It's good, nice. You did, you did well. Thanks. Right. What's your name? Alex. Alex? All right, have a seat. What's kosher? So it's a set of rules that okay. Jewish people like eat their food by. Mm-hmm. Like, we talk right into the mic. Sorry, like you can't eat pork. And there are like specific rules. I'm not really 100% sure on what they are, but. Um, so like, do you use it in like different types of products as well, other than food? For like. Like hair products, maybe? Um, not really. It's really just w- about what you ingest. Like, oh. like um, an example is Crest toothpaste has gelatin in it, mm-hmm. which like has pork, but you're allowed to use it because you're not like ingesting yeah, it. Ingesting it. Yeah. Cool. So I'm not breaking any rules either. <laughs> Dude, you could be Jewish. No, You're I'm right? Muslim. Yeah, but you don't eat pork, right? So that's right. good. You're halfway Jewish. Yeah. Damn, all right. Halfway. I mean, I, if yeah. If you put it that way. I'm know? halfway. I'm circumcised, so I'm like three quarters <laughs> of the way there. <laughs> Seriously. No, I was named my, my mom. So I was, remember, I was the fifth kid, right? Like my mom, she was bored having kids by the time I came. She was just like, ah, oh, fuck, another one. All right, so <laughs> she... The doctor, so I was born, and they said, what's, what are you going to name him? And she said, well, I guess I like your name. And my doctor's name was Samuel Sam. Zucker. He wow. was Jewish, her Jewish gynecologist. So she named me, ah, oh, I'll just name him Samuel. That's how lazy she was. So Sorry, you could be halfway Muslim as well? Um, I, am, I converted to Islam, actually. So, Did you? Yeah, a while back. It was an accident, but it's all good. <laughs> I'll tell you the story sometime. What else is there about keeping kosher? Though? Do you keep kosher at your house? No, actually, my dad's Roman Catholic, and He's my Catholic? mom's Jewish. Yeah, so we don't keep kosher, but my grandparents do. Yeah, so what else do they do? You have to have different, like, plates and sets of, like, cutlery for um, if you're going to have meat or dairy, because you can't have them together. Um, so you have two sets of yeah, dishes. two sets of dishes. You can't ever mix it. You right. actually, um, like, can't put them in the dishwasher together or the same sink either. Really? Yeah. It's pretty Dude, this strict. is serious stuff. So that's, yeah. like, a lot of... Um, so you got to pay more for electricity. I guess so. I guess. Yeah. But, but you don't use electricity during Shabbat, so you save yeah. it right there. What but is Shabbat? actually, so Shabbat's like the holy day. So it's like the Sabbath. You know, it's Saturday instead of Sunday okay. for Jews. Yeah. So that's like the, the days for you guys. It's like, for rest. For rest. Yes. Okay. Just like Sundays for Christians or mm-hmm. Catholic. All right, Fridays are for Muslims. All right, cool. I got you. So in your household, it's cool. Like, thing, your dad rests on Sunday. Your mom mm-hmm. starts resting on Friday night. You, like, got the whole weekend. Basically. Just kidding. Yeah. We, they don't really do anything. I don't know. I need a frat guy. 
Did, is your name Ryan by chance? It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, what frat are you in? Uh, tall Kappa Epsilon. So here's what I want you to discuss. <laughs> no, no, but the, no, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Sometimes I just pick someone because it, it's like nice for me to kind of narrow it down a little bit. And so I'm like, yeah, I'll pick a frat guy out. Because it's hard. If I just leave it up to everybody, I don't know who I'm going to get or whatever. So it's kind of nice. It just narrows it. And then it, it kind of narrows it to particular people. Me Too is less appropriate, less significant for fraternity communities than for non-fraternity communities. In fraternity communities, you, you at least have workshops and discussions and like all sorts of things that are actually happening where you're engaged in this. And most fraternity communities are also, frats are connected to some sorority. So then you, you're connected there and the leadership of the organizations is talking about this stuff. But outside of fraternity, outside of Greek organizations, it's just a free for all. So there's no particular reason that you would, we would pick someone from a fraternity to talk about this over just any random guy in the class. It's just that, eh, it's just more fun to have you down here. So go ahead, man. Well, actually, I don't really know a lot about this. I know it's like, it was like a big Twitter thing. Uh, it was about like sexual, like sexual assault and like uh, women coming out and like uh, calling like men out for like sexual assault. Like, mm-hmm. But, mm -hmm. When? Uh, like 2017. Do you think it could be related to a movie producer um, who's no longer a movie producer? I actually know that. That's actually, I heard it was like something about like, like Harvey Weinstein. Was yeah. that it? I believe so. All right. right. Dude, nice question. All right. Anybody else? Who else has got a question? Are you aware of the like significance around such things such as sexual assault and like rape? happening or like being like almost like coming from I guess fraternities in a way yeah I think like it actually is an epidemic in the fraternity system like it happened I think it happens more than like people like like say and uh I think it's just like people who are just like afraid to like call people out for it and like like I think this is something that's good for like like uh women around like they can they have like a movement that they can like build around and like start calling people out for like what, what they do, you know? Do you, but not just the frat community, right? Think about what I just said, what I said. Yeah, it's, it's true, yeah. Like, Within a fraternity, do you think that there is assault of men as well? Like, I know you're in one, but yeah, I know. But like, you think that men could come out about this too? It's not just like a woman thing? That's what I mean. Dude. I mean, yeah, like, if, if someone like sees something happening, like you should definitely call them out for it. Like, mm-hmm. But sexual assault, do men ever talk about being sexual assaulted in the community? In, the, in your fraternity, for example? Not really. You, you guys don't talk I about th that? I think, like, especially with guys, they might be afraid to, like, say something. I thought you were asking, is it just something, is the Me Too hashtag something that's just coming out of, from women, as opposed to men are also participating, not as people who have experienced sexual assault, but it, it participating as men who are standing up for, for the rights of women and standing up for women and pointing stuff out, you know. Social 19 is a class where, you know, uh, you know in, in one minute we're kind of laughing and in another minute we're not laughing. And the problem in a class like this is that there are so many people in here that no matter what we talk about, there are people in this class who have experienced it. And so, so you know, we just had a quick comment back and forth about men being sexually assaulted. There are plenty of men in this classroom who have been sexually assaulted um, by other men and by women. And many, actually. And so um, the problem in a class like this, and you all kind of, you have to, I want you to kind of get used to it, that you know, once again, in one moment, we might be kind of laughing about black Twitter, this or that, and, and but in another moment, it's like it's gonna get really serious real fast, because it is. And, um, and so, I, I mean, just the comment about, like, Me Too, for, for women in here, 
Um, those of you who have had s- some kind of experience, different levels of experience of sexual assault, this is real for you. And, um, and all of the men in here know women who have had some kind of an experience, whether it's our friends or our sisters or our mothers or aunts or our grandmothers or, or anybody or the people we're sitting in class with. And so, you know, this stuff is real, right? This is why this class gets, um, it's really, can, it'll get real serious real fast. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think that Neve's question towards Ryan was more so um, his experience probably rushing or pledging. So as a, when you're rushing a fraternity, you're easily vulnerable. It's a yeah. very vulnerable, extensive process. And I think she was trying to ask, like, if you've ever witnessed, like, you or any of your fellow pledges, like, being sexually assaulted, and maybe um, if men wouldn't be as likely to speak up about it because it's something they might be afraid of mentioning. Like, yeah. I, if it's something Dude, that happens. Did it really, the nice question. Thanks for that. Yeah, I mean, like, when you're in a fraternity, like, they preach loyalty. So, like, I guess in some fraternities, like, like it may happen, and then, like, n- they won't say anything because it's, like, a brotherhood. Yeah. But, like, you should be calling out people for that. Like, that, that just can't. Like. But y'all do, but people do some really crazy things. Mm-hmm. Crazy things that are, like, very, in, especially in male fraternities that are very homoerotic. Let's just say that. You know, like, that involves a lot of nakedness and all sorts of, like, stuff that goes on. I mean, I get... <laughs> Me, 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 okay, you know, and, and again, maybe not your, I've been around the block a long time, and so, like, yeah, it's, not my fraternity. Yeah, yeah. Um, bro, and next to you, had a quick question, this will be the last one. Um, I'm wondering if you think that fraternities right now are getting too much flack, or maybe not enough flack from the Me Too movement, or if there should be more or less of a focus on fraternities. Dude, nice question. I guess, like, it, it is a big problem in fraternities, so I guess, like, maybe there should, should be, like, more light shed on, like, the, like, the sexual assaults that happen in fraternities, because, like, a lot of people don't talk about it in fraternities, like, they, like, push that stuff down, like, push it away, yeah. so, I mean. So here's a way to think about this, though, right? See, in, in some ways, fraternities are, like, and sororities are really easy targets, because you're these social organizations that come together, and... You know, you're, you're, you basically have nothing else that bonds you together except you went through some kind of hazing project, even if we don't call it hazing. It's something that pulls you together, right? Something that bonds you to the other people and loyalty and so on, right? So it's really easy then to say, oh, we're going to do all this programming, this Me Too programming for the fraternity community, right? Well, a, a, not a very large percentage of Penn State is involved in frats and, in the Greek life. So what about everybody else? How do you get them all to come in a room? Like if we want all of the, like the men who are pledging fraternities to have to go through some initi- some, some uh, workshop on Me Too, we can bring them all into 100 Thomas at 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning and they will show up because they have to show up and we're going to put them through this workshop. What about all the other men on campus? And this is kind of what, you, what you're getting at with your question. What about them? You're, I'm not going to get them here. They're never going to come. You guys are going to have to come. Like your new pledges right now, you're pledging right now, right? You're going to be starting up pretty quickly? Uh, yeah, rush starts. Rush starts, right? So you're going to force them to do stuff. So they're going to have to hear things. But the rest of you who aren't involved, you, never, you don't have to hear it. You're never going to be forced. And so there's a way in which fraternities get like kind of poked at. You know, it's like you guys. What You guys are the problem. What about all the other people? Like, it, and so this is, this is something that really has some value in thinking about. Anyway, dude, all right, nice job. Thanks, man. Yeah. I want someone who, who watches because who watches they enjoy Fox, a lot of Fox News. Wait, yeah. what's your name? My name is Andrew. Andrew. Tell the class what a social justice warrior is. Um, to me, a social justice warrior is a, a leftist ideologue. Someone who Fanatic, is, maybe? Yeah, fanatic, yeah. ideologue, sort of same deal. There's someone who is worrying about social problems in our society that to me are not that significant. Things like factory farming? Factory farming, I guess. I don't really associate that with, with uh, social justice warriors. The biggest one I think of is 
is gender issues. That's one that pops into my mind. But like Me Too? Sure, my, sure. me too. But th that's not know. that significant though? Hang on, hang okay, on, hang, okay. on, hang on. Right. No, hang on. Yeah, so this is what happens. No, this, this is where we get, I'm just gonna All help right, you. So out. now that I'm digging, no, sure, no, no, you can no, say no, me too no, no, no. is a social yeah. justice word, but the one that immediately comes to mind is gender stuff, and I don't consider that significant. Just gender stuff, right. Okay, like what kind of gender stuff? Like how many genders are there, you know? Oh, all right, okay, like how, well, let's get the name right. Like are we, are we, right. Uh, yeah, right. All the names, okay, which we'll, which, which we'll talk about in here. Okay, so that sure. one, right? Yeah. Get the right genders, get the, are you cisgendered? Are you this, that, right. the other? And that's just okay. because that's what gets the most immediate attention. There's probably infinite number of social justice warrior topics. But some of them get more attention than totally. others. And you think yeah. like, okay, hang on, can we get past this and get to more serious issues like climate refugees? Right, right. All right, bro, go ahead, man. We have a question from the front row. Yeah. Um, have you ever considered that those issues matter to other people um, and that's why they are warriors no. for that? No, okay, hang on. So the question is, what about how do you deal with social justice warriors when everyone, like this is what we were saying about fanatics, every issue matters to somebody. Mm -hmm. And so what do you do for that? Um, you try to find common ground. All right. Dude, by the way, your question had an edge to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I think... Ask the question in a different way. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I came... I, yeah, how, it, it start, was definitely pointed. your question with how yeah. about... I mean, it's a fair question. Yeah, like, I mean, I think there's, there's things on both sides. Like, there are probably things you care about as well that you maybe are passionate for. And yeah. um, I think part of it's maybe... Uh, I'm not saying yeah. you, but I think people sometimes online are a little too violent against each other and they assume that these people fighting for these other topics may okay so know. the but i'm gonna i'm gonna restate your question though yeah. so the issue is how, what do you what do you do about when people are these are really serious issues and people are really really serious about them like for example mm -hmm. i so i guess when i say they don't matter maybe that's not what i really mean what i yeah. mean is they get Dispropor a disproportionate amount of media attention. Yeah. There's a lot more pressing issues that the world is facing today. Uh, our country is so divided. Uh, we're facing a massive technological revolution that's going to put tons of people out of work, and we have to face things like that. Yeah. Yeah. I get you're, you're facing climate change, my friends. That you all are facing that. That is a train that's coming down the tracks. But let's talk about something over here. And yeah, but neither. Um, I'm Katie. Katie. So you said like that our country is divided, but don't you think by bringing up these issues that might not be relevant to your life that it's relevant to somebody's like somebody else's life? Okay, hang on. We're going to ask it a different way though. So what do you do when you bring up the issues, but they're not relevant to your life, one person's life, but they're really relevant to somebody else's? Well, so like, I don't know. I no, hang on, hang on. So you already you sort of responded. Right. So the, so it doesn't matter to me. So the thing for me to do is kind of just listen, and if it doesn't affect my life, then I don't really care. I'm more libertarian that way. If it doesn't really affect me, it doesn't, if I don't have to change significant portions of my life, then go ahead, do what you want. But if you, like, you brought up gender issues. So say your friend is going through a transition and they would prefer to be called by, like, different pronouns, would you go out of your way to make them feel more comfortable or would you just like kind of stick to your ways because it doesn't I've, I've worked with someone who was transgender before and it was it was uh, it was a little awkward for me but I just tried to treat them with respect I did use their preferred pronoun awesome yeah dude awesome yeah that's cool all right we have one more one more man uh, my name is Andrew I just have a question about your thoughts on the Covington Catholic kid case the kid wearing the MAGA hat uh, at, in Washington, D.C., and CNN just lost a lawsuit over about $275 million over it. Just, does that represent most social justice warriors? Um, I don't know much about the aftermath of that case. I did see that he won. I don't, haven't delved into any details. But when that issue first arose, the most startling aspect of it was to me is how we had just completely different stories. It looked like different events, depending on who you asked. Yeah. And that's a symptom of a larger problem in our country. And that's, that's really what I was focused on when that whole issue came up. Dude, awesome, man. Hey, uh, dude, by the way, um, I need someone who identifies as Latino or Latina or Latinx or Hispanic. So Justin, yeah. where, where's, talk in the mic now. Hello. 
All right, where's your family from? Um, I have family from Puerto Rico and then uh, the Dominican Republic. In the DR? And do yeah. you speak Spanish? Um, I used to, not anymore. What happened, though? I don't know. I just kind of got lost in the uh, lost in the sauce. Yeah, you know <laughs> Unfortunately. why? Unfortunately, it's because you have because you go by Justin. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like all right. So listen, man. Here's yours. Explain it to the class in in you, you, like in you know a minute and a half or so, as comprehensively as you can, without politicizing it. All right. Um. So along the border between the U.S. and Mexico, there is like a fence, it's not really a complete wall yet, but it's a fence right now for some parts of it. And yeah, it's to keep it from like people getting in illegally. So I think getting that's- Getting where? In, into getting where? into whichever country people are moving from. You know, mm -hmm. you, you gotta do it the right way. And where is the fence? Um, between the US and Mexico. And how, like, what's the, what, what, like, what, what, so what's the issue with people coming it, is illegally? Well, I would say the issue would be illegally, yeah. But, what's it mean to be illegal? What are we talking about? Well, to get into the country l illegally would be to not go through, you know, customs or anything like that when trying to get over, whether you're going from Mexico to the United States or from the United States to Mexico. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And the fence, what, what's the, why is it such a hot-button political issue? Well, I would say it's such a hot-button issue because it's being the whole idea of someone coming into the country illegally is kind of being used as a way to take away people's rights at this wall, mm -hmm. at these checkpoints as well. Uh-huh. What do you mean? I mean, like, for example, like, all the, um, the camps where, like, the kids are being held and stuff along the wall. Uh-huh. So, kids? like, what huh? kids? What kids? Kids from Mexico. Uh-huh. All right, man. To some, who has a question? For Justin, right, bro? Yeah. Why do you feel like the border wall is being enforced in the way that it is? And what do you think is a way to mitigate all of the backlash that comes from it? Um... I think that the border wall is like, it's being used in the way it is because it's being used as a way to enforce a narrative against a certain group of people, which is that, you know, Mexicans are not good people, which is not true because we're all human beings. But that's the narrative, like, that's being told underlying in my opinion. So you nodded to that, right? Did you all notice, did you watch where he just took a turn to the political? He just politicized it right there? Did you, you hear that? But you agree with it probably, right? What, what did you agree with? I mean, yeah, just the fact that there's like dehumanization when it comes to Mexicans and the border wall um, and just seeing that they're criminals or they're gonna bring criminal activity, they're illegal, they're undocumented. So why do you think that that narrative, why do you think some people would wanna push that narrative? Um, I guess some people might push that narrative because of their underlying bias, maybe, I guess. Underlying, like, issues of things, like, from the past that are still, like, present in people's ideologies today. And once again, listen, we're, we're, you're hearing from classmates, and in the process of hearing from classmates, you should be sitting there thinking, hey, man, if I give you the microphone, what, do you, what would you say? Or if I give you the microphone, bro, what would you say? Right, that's what I want you thinking right now. What are you gonna say? Dude, why do you think some people wanna have that narrative? I'm gonna do it with this guy right here. Uh, bro, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> um, I wouldn't say like, is necessarily a narrative that kind of enforces that need for a wall. It's more of the kind of what they're taking from the government. I mean, mm -hmm. more of like, if they're not paying for their fair share, then I, someone else has to pick up the pieces. Okay, so, there's, so it gets complicated here. Dude, nice, man. All right, so there's another piece of it, right? You see, like, all this stuff has to come in together. Bro, did you get that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's cool. All right, man. Hey, thanks. Yeah. You got it. Thank you. Nice job. <laughs> yeah.
Can I get, I need two international students. Someone from the Middle East, first off. Who's from the Middle East? And then someone from Asia. China is ideal. What's your name? Omar. Omar? Yeah. What's your name? Uh, I can go by Frost. Frost? Yeah. What's your Chinese name? Uh, my Chinese name is called uh, Shen Sen Ni. What is it? Uh, Shen Sen Ni. Do you got that? Say that. <laughs> That's why I go by Frost. No, no, no. It's all oh, good. Wait, wait, wait. No, he can do it. Oh, wait, wait, say, <laughs> yeah. it again. say it again. Uh, Shen Sen Ni. Shen Sen Li. Is that yeah, close? that's close. Xing Xing Li. It's not close, Butchered my friend. <laughs> You're just trying to be nice up here. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how we do things. All right, so here's what I want the two of you to talk about. That. We're going to go with right. Frost right. here. Right. Sure. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what that is. Go take a guess. Uh, uh, no, hang on. What, what do you think it might... Have you ever heard that before? The N-bomb? I think I heard the N-bomb, the word, but I don't know what that means. Okay, well, let's say it's not the N-bomb. What's another way to say it? The N word. I think I know that. Okay. Because in because in Mandarin, in Mandarin we have uh, in Mandarin we say the word that. It sounds very close to that N word. Yeah. So. What is it? You you want me to say it in Mandarin? <laughs> yeah, 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 in Mandarin. <laughs> so in Mandarin, if we if we want to say like uh, that apple. Yeah. It's it sounds like a uh, Pingo. Sometimes if the that is not good, but sometimes we say it really fast. It sounds like the N word. Ah, oh, yeah. like not li- not phonetically. It yeah. If we say that really quick, it's not good. Sometimes okay. not right. good. So it sounds really close. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. It's not. I, I'm not being like uh, like an <laughs> asshole here, but it, 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 that that's how it works. You know, and that's how yeah. it works. Like when you say it really fast, it sounds like that. All right. Okay, bro, what would you give? Well, uh, hey, not, that's good. I like, yeah. thanks, man. Uh, so this is a like, super interesting topic because like, uh, it always teeters between uh, like freedom of speech and uh, just like the context of that word historically. I know internationally um, it's used like, I would say like pretty commonly from, with people of color in particular, but I you know... You mean it, in other countries? Yeah, I would say. I mean, cause, because like, there's a lot of exposure to American media via rap or shows, and so it, it sort of morphs itself into uh, people's uh, vernacular. Um, mm-hmm. But um, you find that uh, it, it's a much bigger issue here, uh, but I feel like it's a very avoidable issue uh, for people who are not black, but uh, yeah, other people... So back, so when you say it morphs into a certain vernacular, yeah. Is that what do whose vernacular? What do you mean? No, I mean like um, like in Arabic. No, just like with people who are exposed to Western media okay, uh, from it. these countries, yeah. like because they're not exposed to the history of the word, they don't know it as anything more beyond something you would say to an endearing friend. The, the education that lies behind the the use of yeah. the word within like uh, so slavery. Do you, so, yeah. do you, so do you speak Arabic? Fluently? I do. Yeah. Yeah. The Egyptian Arabic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what's a word in Arabic that's kind of equivalent to the N word in Arabic? Not about the N word. I mean, just a word that's equivalent that if somebody uses it to the wrong group, it's like, oh my God. Yeah, there's, there's like the Arabic version of the N word. And obviously, it's, it's interesting being from Egypt because it's an African country, but it's also like North, North African. And so it's a, it's a touching point for a lot of cultures. And so, if and I in the past have been called like uh, the N word via Arabic or other languages, uh, and it still sucks, you know. Uh, but yeah. So, but is so is there a word though in in Arabic that you use not not regarding people of African ancestry? I mean, okay. just a word like maybe toward the the Omanis, the Yemenis, or something. That's like a word that you that people use that's just really problematic. I feel like um, it's less race based and yeah. like something uh, that people say in Egypt is like uh, if they want to call someone stupid they call him uh, a falah which means farmer uh, farmer and, yeah and and it's it's problematic because it's not racist but it's like super classist because then you're attributing all these negative like um, what do you call it like negative uh, yeah. ideas around uh, like an honest group of people right yeah. so Mr. Frost yeah how about in, in, in Mandarin? Yeah. Is there a word that similarly, if you use it towards somebody, not, not regarding the, the, the N-word, right, but just another word toward a particular groups? 
like the way worse or something? Or like, is there a word that you use that are just, that's just really bad? Um, if you speak in Mandarin, it's hard to target certain group of people in China. But um, in some dialect, I think, mm -hmm. uh, in certain region of China, uh, it's like uh, really horrible. But I can't think of a word in Chinese. It's like an N-word. It's basically some bad word. So. You can or you can't? I can't. Yeah? Yeah. Any other, any other Mandarin speakers who can think of a word? Yeah. What's the worst thing you could say in Mandarin? What's the worst thing you could call somebody? <laughs> like me, if you wanted to talk about your professor who you really hated, what would you uh, call me? I don't know. We have too much words to <laughs> can say to a bad people. <laughs> to, you know, we have too much words can say for a bad thing or bad people. No, it's kind of interesting. Like swearing, well, I, you know, I remember in the past I've done a, a, an entire class just on swearing, right? Because it's really fascinating. Um, like in, in Colombia, there's a phrase, I think I, it's probably in other countries, but I only know it in Colombia, no se llevó el putas. And it basically, who's Colombia? Where's my Colombian person? The, no se llevó el putas. Right, you've heard it. It's pretty, <laughs> how, <laughs> so, <laughs> how bad, how bad is that? If I just was standing up or going like, yo, class, no se llevó el putas. It's like pretty much like, we're too deep down, like it's so bad. Like we're fucked. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. But it means that they, like, they sent us to the, to the prostitutes, but in this case, it's the devil. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. And like, but so we were at a, my wife and I were, were speaking. So you live in Colombia, right? I did, did, yeah. Yeah, so my wife and I were speaking. We were giving a talk to this peace, um, to the, uh, peace, the P peace commission, the truth commission in Colombia about a year ago. Okay. And we're in this room and it's being filmed and so on. And I learned this phrase ahead of time because I love swear words and stuff, right? <laughs> I just love playing because it means something different. Like I can say all sorts of things in other languages. They don't mean anything to me because it's not my language. So it's like you don't know, right? Like the end bomb people can just say it and they don't really understand what it is, right? So I was going to say say this because I was talking to this group of people and basically we were talking about peace and truth and I wanted to say basically we're all screwed um, and I looked at my friends who were sitting in the back and they knew I was going to say it and I and I looked hey can you put me on can you put me on the front camera and give me a, give me a close up and so and so I looked at them, like, I'm re just ready to put it, and my friends are cool, like, they're funny and stuff, and so these are some really important people in the room, but I'm like, you know, I'm me, you know what I mean? When I'm in another culture, I'm still me, and I look at them, and I, and I start saying, and they both went like this, they went, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, okay, so that means that whatever it is, and they told me, this is just really bad. You don't want to say this, right? Which, of course, makes me want to say it. But, and, and they just both said, don't say it. Even though it was the perfect moment for me to say it. And so I, but I didn't. I just said, all right, I won't. Yeah. OK, so the end bomb. So why do you think it's the end bomb? Like, it's the end word, but it's the end bomb. Wait. I mean, because. Uh you ruin your social life pretty badly if you get caught uh, saying it get in public, I guess. What do you think about the fact that people of, uh, uh, that a lot of people of African ancestry yeah. still say it? I think that's a, I mean, that's an interesting take and you can be like, oh, like you shouldn't say it at all, like no one should say it, but like, I don't think that's a, the determination of the group outside of those oppressed to tell them, oh, you can't use this word that was used against you, right? Uh, like, I think the whole idea is that, oh, we've taken it back and we've um, sort of repurposed the word and yeah. I think that's like completely up to the, that community. You can't be like, oh, either all of us can say it or none of us can say it, because like, Life is much more complicated than these yeah. sort of um, yeah. absolutist statements, I guess. Yeah, all right, man. Yeah, I, I agree with him. Uh, at first, I think for, uh, for non-African American communities, uh, if we say that, it's like, uh, I, think, I personally think it's quite offensive. Uh, I don't think it's respectful, but uh, for their own communities, I think, uh, I think you know, they, they won't say it, they can say it because they represent themselves and... Uh, 
I think they are pretty cool because they can like, uh, you know, take so, some kind of work which is at first humiliate them, but they take it by themselves and you know use it. Yeah. So I think they are like they are pretty cool because, you know, our Chinese we will not say like hey chinks hey chinks we will not like like that right, <laughs> right, right stay yellow no we are not doing that but, they, they, it's, you know they can take others' humiliation become their own positive energy so I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you, when did you first hear chink as a word? I think during my high school when I was still in China uh, because sometimes, you know, some celebrities in Hollywood, sometimes they post some, you know, stuff which humiliate, like, Chinese, Asians. So the news will report it, so I saw it. Yeah. yeah. So, they, for example, the typical stuff is, like, they think Chinese people are always small eyes, you know, in one, to one... Wait, lines. hang on, let me see. Yeah, but Wait. actually, I think my eyes are pretty big. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang, hang on, can yeah, you do a close-up? Uh, Let's yeah, yeah, let that, the class... That, that's the case, that's the case. Actually, our eyes are pretty big, right? Well, well hang on, we're going to let the... Can I take... Can we take uh, your head off? I can, I can. Yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's a bad hair day, y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Let, so, and yeah, second, right. you good. know, they all call Ching Chong's. I mean, yeah. All right. Dude, awesome. Anybody have a question, by the way? Any black people have a question? I mean, I, you know, I could just let black people answer this question, but what's the point of that? You know what I mean? Let them in. Anybody have a question? Anybody? All right. So my question is that, you know, if on all these people, it's easy to be like, yeah, it's their word. They could use it to repurpose it, and it's cool. But, like, when it's only you and your friends and there's no black people there, I mean, I would think, like, it's really easy to be like, yo, you know, what's good, my nigga, and shit like that. You feel me? <laughs> So like, so are you just saying this because it sounds nice for like other people to hear, or is it like when it's only you and your guys, you're like, <clears throat> what's good, my nigga? <laughs> wait, hang on. Let's start with Frost. Yeah, okay. Oh wait. He's a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so I, I didn't hear very clearly. So basically, you think you know uh, during the public, maybe we will not say it because we know it's offensive. But you think maybe in private uh, situation, we will say it because no one else will know it. Did you mean yeah, that? Well, yeah. Would you do that? Like, what, what well, about that? Well, uh, I will be honest. Uh, I will not do that because I don't, because, you know, from China here, I'm also like a minority. So I want to be respected. So, so you know, the respect is two ways. So well, I will respect others, other people too. So I will not do that, you know, even it's not public. But, you know, thank you. But it's all depends. It, but, but it all depends on yourself. So some people may, may do it, some people may not do it. Because just like I mentioned before, in Chinese, when we say that, it sounds like the N-word. And sometimes when I go out with my, with my Chinese friends, classmates, and, you know, when some African Americans are around us, we will, I, I sometimes get a little bit nervous because might be some misunderstandings. But I, I, I will even try to avoid say that in Chinese. But, you know, as long as you're... You know, your shots are good. You are not doing that. You're fine, I think. All right. Yeah. Um, you, bro? I think that's a very fair question. And obviously, it's easy to be like, oh, you should never say it and all that. And then in private, do whatever. But I think it's important for people to maintain consistency because it's people aren't switches. You can't be like, oh, I'm just going to use this word in this very private setting and then I'm just going to never use it in public because the moment where you get angry, the moment where like things get rough, you're just going to like pull it from the back of your head and it's like, it's not a place you want to be. And also like English language is expensive enough for you to use a million other like substitutes. So, I mean. All right. So listen now. Hang, hang. All right. That's cool. But hang on. I just want to put a challenge out here for a second. Uh, for you, Omar. Go for it. So, um, see, Africa, uh, Egypt's always been part of Africa. And not, obviously not the, the, the subcontinent um, yeah. and sub-Saharan Africa, I mean, but it's part of Africa. And, but part of what we've experienced in the past 30 years or so is a real push on the part of people in the, in the black community especially the intellectuals in the black community, to really say, no, 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 bring Egypt back into Africa. And, and really insisting that Egypt is part of Africa, which means then you're part of Africans. You are, you're African. Mm -hmm. And so what's that mean in terms of him being able to drop the N-bomb, even though he's Egyptian, right? So see, it's like we push him back around, and it's like, hey, wait, hang on a second. You know, you're not from sub-Saharan Africa, 
but nonetheless, right? So it's just this one of these kind of interesting things. All right, I think, thanks, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you. you guys did great. Okay, man, we're going to do the next one. And we need a Christian. Hey, hey, someone who's like really Christian. All right, what's your name? I'm were Alex. You, were you down here before? No. So just say what you know, like what you would, how you would say that in a way that, you know. So a lot of times with this context, it's, it's kind of sad because it, it paints a big picture of just the whole Muslim and Islamic community in general. Um, cause this can even be applied to Christians with like our classic Willard preacher that likes to be outside the hub of where you have a person who will take what, whatever the religious reading or books or whatever it may be, and they'll take it to the next step and a lot of times take things out of context as well to where it can be an actual detriment to society as a whole rather than the good that the religion is actually trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. So what is it? So what is it? Who are the, who are the folks? That, so say a little more. Uh, a lot of times so that, you can. So you just frame the context, yeah. right? So a lot of times you can associate, at least in terms of Islamic rad radicalists, as terrorists. Those are going to be your your classic examples of like your really really extreme versions. And then you can still have your extreme versions, but they're not going to be your terrorists. I'm gonna go and blow something up, or I'm gonna go and try and kill their people who don't agree with what I believe in. Um, you can just have the people that are like, hey, this is what I believe, I'm very stern about it, and if you don't like it, so be it, I really don't care, I'm just going to argue and say what you believe isn't true regardless. Okay, all right, cool, man. Um, who's got a question for a Alex, right? Yep. Who's got a question for Alex about Islamic radicalism? Do you think that term came from the West, like West culture, or like the Middle East? I would personally say it's more of a Western, um, a Western ideology. I don't know personally too much about, um, like I learned Middle Eastern history in high school and stuff, but I personally don't know about enough about their societal history and all that good stuff to actually tell you if that is where it did originate. Um, I know we do have like the Arabic alphabet and stuff, so there's a good chance that it did, but due to how, um, how heavy the influence is of Western cultures, I would not be surprised if that is where the term came from. All right, man, who's got, who's got a question for him? What's the line that separates from being a regular Muslim to being radical? What would you say is a defining factor? Oh my God, dude, thank you. Well, here, let me ask a question, flip it to Christians. What's the line? Because there are radical Christians, right? There are radical Christians yeah. who are like not only radical, but radical violent. Yeah. Oh, What's yeah. the line? I think the biggest thing, I guess, in the term of Christianity is when you really, you take something out of context and then you take that out of context item and that becomes almost what your core, your core value is. Not everything else that it's trying to preach or include, but just taking that one, that one fact that... Can Everyone should be a Christian, for example. Like, if you're not, like, or you're not white. Or, like, there's so many things. No, go with um, the ever. If you're not a Christian, yes, then... Yes, like, if you're not a Christian, then I've seen people. For example, Willard Preacher, um, there's a guy, there's a whole group of people that came and were arguing about, um, oh, what was it? I, don't, I think it was just everything in general. Um, I don't know if you all remember. It was in fall semester. They're causing a real ruckus outside the hub one day. Um, but, like, stuff like that is what you would consider radicalism when they're just trying to force their skewed version of the belief onto you rather than sitting there calmly listening to what you have to say and just wanting to know what your thoughts are. Because the whole point of whether you're a Christian or a Muslim or whatever your belief may be is not to sit there and tell someone you're wrong. Yeah. At least from a Christian view, you're told to love on people and stuff and that means listening to them, caring about them, and as humans, we love to be heard and listened to. And if you can't do that, then that's going to cause a lot of problems and a lot of um, debates, uh, really angry conversations and stuff. Cool. Hey, listen. Cool. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. And let me just say the following. Uh, regarding that first, the first question, um, the term actually... So I, t I spent a lot of time in the Middle East, and I spent a lot of time dealing with this issue. And it's kind of like with Christianity. There's a very tiny slice of Muslims that are radical yeah. in their belief yeah. system, very tiny slice of Christians. So the word really, it's talked about more in the Middle East mm -hmm. than it is talked about here. It may seem like, 
you know, it seemed like, well, this is a West thing, and it's like, you know, the West and the America, the United States comes up with this, and because that's how we are, because we're a racist, you know, all that kind of left, kind of critical perspective. But in fact, in, in, in uh, Muslim countries, it's a very common conversation to talk about, you know, radical ideologies and the problems with radical ideologies. So, bro, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. I would like to bring up a, a, uh, a, couple, a couple women. And you, what's your name? I'm Katie. Katie and? I'm Iman. Iman. Yeah. Just tell us everything you know about black women's hair. So I don't know much, but I know there's a huge like issue going around about whether like black women's hair should be able to like be able to be worn naturally or like the stigma surrounding like whether they wear a weave or if they wear it naturally, if it's considered unprofessional or what. But I don't know much about like people's opinions. About how, what do you know about how people wear their, choose to wear their hair, how they wear their hair, how they get their hair to do certain things or... I don't know anything about that. Yeah? Like, I Iman. Mean, you know, no, go ahead. I know that the workplace, like, women in the workplace, I've read that they tend to feel more comfortable if they have their hair, like, done a certain way, what, like, rather than it being natural. But I don't know if that's, like, how the women in the audience feel. Yeah. Okay, how about you? Um, I think it's pretty and there's a lot of different ways you can wear it um, and I think oh I had a roommate last year who was African American and I just really respect her because she had to put like so much work into getting her hair to like look good because her hair was really curly um, but yeah I don't really know anything else like your um, I guess yeah there's kind of like a stigma like I don't know maybe people like judge someone the wrong way if like her hair is like braided versus it being like straight, I guess. Um, hey, w yeah. what? Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yep. I, I, don't, I don't think I have anything else. All right. Um, what would be, how could you offend, uh, wait, hang on, hang on. Um, Amari, where, where are you here? What do you think you could ask her about her hair that would be offensive? Amari here. Look at, look at her hair. Like, I'm not going to lie. You can't <laughs> No. I don't know. I feel like if I were to ask you if you were wearing a weave, that would be offensive. I don't know, though. You think that might be offensive if you, if you asked her? If, what's a weave? Uh, I'll be honest. I don't know. I think it's kind of like a wig, but like, okay. I honestly have no clue. All right. What do you think could be offensive if you asked Amari about her um, hair? Maybe if like, I asked her if that's her real hair. If you asked if it's her real yeah. hair? I feel like that could be rude. I feel like actually that might be the same thing as she was kind of saying. It might be same offensive. Yeah. What's that? Okay. Same, yeah, it's would that be? Thing, wait, what did you say? It's like the same thing, I guess, because I guess if it wasn't real, part of it would be a weave. So like. Um. So I get. Okay. So you're, so you're covering your hair. Yeah. And what is so. What. What's behind covering your hair? Um. So like in Islam, it's like preferred that women cover their hair um, and it's it's like it represents like um, like modesty and so like we cover our hair like I wear to like my wrist and like my ankles so it's like res represents modesty in our okay religion. okay so Amari wh what do you think would be offensive if you asked Iman what might be offensive to ask her about her hair I feel like from a religion standpoint, it would be offensive if I asked, like, could you take it off, or are you Muslim, or are you praying, something like that. But as a black woman, I don't think there's anything offensive I can ask her. What about questions of, okay, that's cool. What about questions of style, or like, does she like her hair? Or does, I mean, honestly, I would ask if she do it, because I would never see it, so I feel like it would be offensive if I asked, like, hey, do you wash your hair? Do you do it? Because I feel like as a black woman, we do our hair. Oh, so you would ask, do, do you wash it? And do you do it, like, what type of style do you wear? Like, do you just wash it and put it on? Do you wash it and braid it? Like, how does it look underneath? Uh-huh. So, in essentially, basic, you would never ask her about her hair then? Yeah. Maybe not asking about your hair would be offensive, right? Is that, like... Um, I mean, I don't really care if people... I don't mean offensive. I put it in a bun, like... Hang on, though, hang on. When I use offensive, by the way, class, um, the, the, the latter 
for me to for something to be offensive the ladder from the 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 first step on the ladder is really really high like I can say a lot of things and ask a lot of things that for me are not in any way offensive and other people might so when I say when I ask I'm using that word offensive here I'm not using it I'm using it the way you all use it hang on one second bro I'm not using it the way that that I would use it so what is is there a way in which people not even asking you about your hair is like not really I mean honestly I guess I'd like almost rather prefer someone asked if they have a question about it because then I can like use that as an opportunity to just like tell how often them about do it. they how do people ask um like not really that often at all honestly so never basically. yeah <laughs> like right. people ask more pe- if people ask questions it's more just like yeah like when do you take it off or like do you shower yeah. with it on? Like, ob- you sh- obviously not. Do you shower? People ask if you shower with yeah. it on? Yeah. Like, I what don't do even know that? how that would work. I just, I'm like, no. No, you should but. say yes. Of course I <laughs> yeah. do. I can't have, people might see me in the shower. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Are I they like, yeah. Are they like, a good question is like, when they ask like, who you can take it off around or something. Like oh, That's a cool question. Yeah, that's like a good question. So I want to go back to him. You go, go ahead. How is that asking about your hair? It's more so asking about like your hijab itself. It's kind of like when you're in the presence of men, can you do this? But what do people ask you like about your actual hair? Um, Well, probably the way I wear it is like a lot looser than like a lot of people wear it. So like my hair is like always showing right here. So I guess sometimes people ask like why I wear it this way as opposed to like tighter in my face kind of. And that's just because like. I don't want something squeezing my face all day. Like, I just like to wear it like this. So here, let me, can we just say this really fast? And then I want to go, t- I want you to talk, Amari, for a hot minute. So just like in, in all religions and all perspectives, you know, there's like, a, there's like a big line of differences, right? So people are much more conservative or much more liberal. And so, you know, you are much more liberal in your, in your style. You're showing hair. And yeah. like there are other women who who would, many women who wear hijab and wouldn't show any hair whatsoever. But increasingly, the world is getting more liberal. Right. Hey, so I want to go back to the weave piece. So she said, hey, is, is that a weave? Like, can, tell us, can you just tell us a little bit about, tell us about your hair. Well, I can feel like clo- Can as we a, get a close-up of Amari? She said that a long I feel like as a black woman, we can change our hair in many different types of hairstyles as often as you want. Like, on Monday, I can be Mari. On Tuesday, I can be a Mari. On Wednesday, I can be Ari. And on Thursday, I can be somebody. And on Friday, I can be somebody because that's like the beauty in black women hair to me. So I feel like if I wear a weave, that's like, do you want me to explain what a weave is? She would like to know uh, what a weave is. So a weave is, um, there's no black people. Oh, okay. A weave is like when there's like extensions and it's straight down. When I wear weaves, I usually wear like a frontal. So it's like, there's like three bundles of weaves and like a frontal in the front part. So there's none of my hair out. Like all my hair is braided. Or you can wear like a wig, and with the, the difference between a wig and a weave is you can just take your wig off whenever you want, whereas a weave is kind of like sewn in, so you're not taking it off like often. Or you can get braids. So like, there's a couple of different braids. Like, they have their hair both in two different braiding styles. I have my hair in a braiding style, which are looking like locks. You can get cornrows. That's what I get all the time. You can wear your hair out. There's a lot of different options. So I have a couple. I I have. A- First off, I just have to ask a really quick question. How often do people ask you about your hair? How often do, let's say, just you, how often do people ask you about your hair? Never. Never? I mean, sometimes I wear my hair like Dutch braided back and people ask me if I did it myself, but <laughs> not to like the same extent, you know? So Amari, what do you know about what she does to her hair to take care of it? Well, my freshman year, my roommate was white, and she used to wash her hair and go outside to class when it's like four degrees. So I do know that living with, um, her name was Anna, living with her, they wash their hair a lot, like white. in the shower. They? You mean As white in people? white women, yes. White women wash their hair a white lot. White men, too? I don't know about, I never Those lived with a white man, Those of us who have Sam. much hair, but the rest of us. <laughs> but as far as white women, they wash their hair a lot and they go outside with it wet. Yeah. Yes. And smell like wet dogs? I don't know what it smells like. I'm All not right, about okay, to walk up you. like, <laughs> but I know that is wet. What's it tell you though? What's it tell you? 
It's, I don't know. I just think that as a black woman, I would never go outside with my hair wet because one, my hair is like 4C, so I can't really let my hair air dry because it's going to be so, so nappy. Do you know what 4C is? No. Yeah, do you know what 4C is? Yeah. Bro, do you know what 4C is? You know what it means? How many white is people in here? Is that how curly here? it is? Let me, what, go ahead. Like, is that the, how curly it is? Yeah, it's like the curl pattern of your hair. Okay, okay. Yeah, so this is getting I, it that's, I, 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 was, I was thinking that. I was thinking You're thinking that too? Hey, give her a high five too. She was thinking that. She didn't say right. it though. Like, you got to say it. All right, so listen, man. Um, who, okay, who, uh, yeah, we need a couple questions, man. Um, as a black woman, like, how do you feel, feel about, like, other races using our hairstyles? Dude. Uh, I don't, I don't like when, um, like the whole thing on Twitter, well, everybody know like Kim Kardashian and the Kardashians? Nah, right. never heard of her, dude. <laughs> What you do? <laughs> like, me personally, I'm, I'm not, like, I don't do hair, and I'm not really big on hair. I just wear my hair whenever I want to, and I usually just wear wigs all the time because it's easier. But I don't like when, um, like, Kim Kardashian and other women like that, like, get braids in their hair and stuff like that because I feel like when people say it was just a hairstyle. I think it's deeper than that because it kind of goes on to our culture and who we are as black women because it's kind of, to me, it's like, blackface like you know sort of yeah. like when companies do like blackface I feel like it's that with the same thing as hairstyles like why are you wearing your hair like that so so one of the big things that like, like it's all about wigs man these days right am I right there's the wigs are like a really big deal these days coming back like wigs and eyelashes like it's awesome are you like, talking about my lashes Sam dude you, you have killer <laughs> lashes Listen, no, it's like wigs and lashes are coming back. Like, you, so it's like I'm back to when the late 1960s, early 1970s, every white woman who I knew wore fake eyelashes and wigs. It was just everyone had wigs in their house. I mean, I'm not going to say, I can't say everyone, but I can say everyone, every woman, right? And so it's their back. Could this, can someone say something about that? In here. Anyone want to say anything about that? Wigs and lashes? Dude, do you want it? You got it? Dude, can you pass it up to You're not rocking a wig, bro. Nah. All right, so um, the lashes, it's just lashes. Um, I never really, like growing up, like I grew up in like a household, like my mom, my grandma, my little sister, so it was all girls. But um, like growing up, I didn't really expect that like, girls really to wear wigs like that anymore. Because I thought it was an old thing. Like I thought like my mom wore wigs, my grandma wore wigs, and I thought like, Okay, so the new generation probably won't wear wigs, but they wear them, so. But, am, but am, am, I, am I, like, not, am I wrong, to, am I off base, like, that wigs are really coming back? No, I feel like wigs are, like, really recycling. It's kind of like, that's what's popping right now. That's, that's popping now. Yeah? Who's right? Yeah, can you, can you kick it back to her? I was going to say, I think one of the reasons why wigs are coming back is because... Um, just how like hairstyles is recycling, the way like the way black women are starting to, you know, take control of natural hair movement and find better ways to like change their hairstyle and not affect their hair at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, can I actually have a I have a question for a man, a man, a man. Can a a a man. A man. Why do you think this is um why do you think this is an important issue in a social class? Dude, can you answer that question at the top? What? Hang on. Why, why this is an important issue in a social class, or did you have another question? Yeah, Sam, I was actually going to ask that, because the streams asked that a few times. Why do we care about hair? Why do we care about hair? I've heard it like four or five times. And I want to say, not to answer the question, but I do think it's a relationship difference between our hair. So for yeah. instance, for me, I know I wash my hair and dry it in about four seconds because I'm losing it, which is great, <laughs> four seconds. But I know like Amari, it's not four seconds for her. Like it doesn't yeah. take you four seconds to dry your hair. Okay. So your relationship with your hair is totally different than mine. So that's why it matters for, well, for me. Okay. I think that's, that's halfway true. I think that's halfway true only because that, for example, when we wear wigs, you, it doesn't take more than four seconds to put it on. Like your hair's already braided, you just wake up, you just snap it on and just walk out. So, and I still think the relationship with it is pretty good. Bro, we have a question up here. 
I'm just kind of confused in general as to why this is up here, like why it's an issue. And I guess the more that everyone's talking about it, I guess I understand like that black women feel they have their hair type because like the girl in the front section, she said, um, what do you think about when white women wear our hairstyle? Yeah. But then that makes me ask like, what if a white woman said, oh, how, um, like, what happens when like a black woman wears her hair straight? Like, yeah. is that it's offensive to a white woman as a like? Is that their hairstyle? Dude, all right, hang on. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask you Sam, to answer can I that. Answer? Do you think you're offending white not women? Your hairstyle. Wait. Well, I feel like that's a good dude. That's a good question. Thanks for asking that. I feel like I have like. Wait, hang on, hang on. Ayana's got this. Mm -hmm. I feel, yeah, like, I feel like I have like kind of an unpopular opinion just about this. And I feel like the whole hair thing, say for braids, for instance, and how it's like, oh, a black woman thing. But if we're going back to the roots of African culture, if we're seeing braids like that, women do not wear the same exact braids yeah. that's been historically contributed to the African culture. To the mother root, and Hold and I feel like as far as straight hair, like anybody can wear it, just like curly hair. Anybody can wear curly yeah. hair. Um, I feel like I don't have a strong opinion against it. Like I mean, yeah, I got you. Sam. What's unpopular about your opinion? Because I feel like people put like hairstyles to like specific races, just because of the fact that a majority of one race wears this, so now it's mine, yeah. and nobody else can wear it. That somebody can easily say the same thing as far as people using extensions and yeah. saying, oh, that's not your hair. Not saying that it's white woman hair, but say if you're wearing Brazilian hair, that's not your hair. So, so like, your, your thought is anyone can wear hair, their hair any way they want, it's all I cool. feel like, just like it's a different hairstyle every day, yeah. so. Yeah, that's cool. All right, man. Okay. Um, listen, we have one. Wait, we have time for one more, one more question. Sam, answer these people down here. All right, dog. I'm gonna take the mic to one of them. No. All right. Which one? Uh, okay. Hey. Dog, we're gonna have to come back to this okay. issue. Um, with this whole um, discussion, it is forgotten that. Um, like back in the day when black women wore their hair in a certain way, they were judged, they were criticized for it. But now when it becomes popular, when everyone wants to wear it, it's not a big problem anymore. But it's like we take pride in the fact that we're able to wear our hair this way. And um, the whole anybody can wear their hair straight or whatever, that was pushed on black women to assimilate them into the culture yeah. so that they can also look like white women and so they can um, become that yeah. level. And that is forgotten. 